Unison Research Triode 25 Stereo Integrated Amplifier. As you can plainly see, we're talking about a tube amplifier today. So before we go any further, I have to ask you guys a question. Are you experienced? Have you ever been experienced with a tube amplifier? It's a binary question. Either you have or you haven't, right? Um, I have. <laughs> you know, the thing is, tubes don't sound like solid state. Well, some tubes start to sound like solid state and then I'm no longer interested in them. Because if I wanted solid state, I would just buy solid state. I like tube amplifiers with tube flavor. Um, I, want, I want that tubiness from a tube amplifier. This amp, the Trio 25, has that. But it, it kind of also lets you have it both ways. You can have it to be, to be or to be er, or you can have it a little less to be because it, it, it has a switch. It can be a run as a triode amplifier. That's the to be your side. Or you can run it as ultralinear slash pento. There's a switch right on the top panel there. So when you're in the mood for to be, you go to be or to be er with the triode. You want a little more control, a little more zip, uh, then you go to the pentone ultralinear. But wait, there's more. Because you can also control the feedback. These are switches right on the top panel. You can have low feedback, just 1.8 dB, or you can have high, which is 5. And 5 isn't that high, but it's higher than 1.8. I ran it in high, after the initial getting to know you period, I ran it high uh, feedback m most of the time. It just, it just was a little more sorted out, a little more together in high, so I didn't experiment much with that. But I have to say with the triode pentode switch, I was switching sometimes as I changed albums. You know, it just, it was a mood thing for me more than anything. I wanted the tubiness. I went for the triode. I wanted a little more control. I went for the pentode. What else? First of all, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's made in Italy. This sample had the cherry wood panel in the front, real cherry wood. Build quality just feels solid. All the switches, all the controls, the knobs in the front. This thing is beautifully crafted. That's the word to use. It's crafted. It's, it, it feels right. It's a joy to use. Oh, speaking of the wood, um, the remote control, <laughs> the body of the remote control is made out of the same cherry wood. It's not a generic plastic or metal remote control. It's, it matches, visually matches the amplifier. And in terms of the overall feel of using the Trio 25, so well done. Really, really classy. Oh, by the way, the, oh, one other nice feature is, so a lot of tube amplifiers nowadays have auto bias, which is basically a good thing. So meaning when you change the power tubes, you don't have to get out a, a multimeter and check the bias. No, it's, most amplifiers have auto bias. This amplifier has what they call uh, a little auto, a little manual, but the manual part, the do-it-yourself bias, so easy to do. You don't need a multimeter. There's a meter right on the top panel, a little switch there. You could switch to the left channel tubes and the right channel tubes, and all you gotta do is turn a little, tiny little knob so that the meter is in the 12 o'clock position, and then that bank of tubes, the power tubes on the left channel, and then move to the switch to the other position, the power tubes on the right channel, get that meter at 12 o'clock, you're good. Super easy, it literally takes seconds to do so. Don't be intimidated. But the nice thing about having this easy adjustment is you can experiment with tube rolling and use different output tubes and just bias them up and you will be good to go. It's my one regret for this review is that I didn't get to do any tube rolling. Um, but I wish I did, because tubes can change the sound of the amplifier. And again, back to are you experienced, meaning with tubes, uh, one of the greatest things about owning tube electronics, amplifiers like this, or even preamplifiers, or phono preamps, is that you can change the sound of the 
device when you change the tube. So as the, the years go by, or maybe even decades go by, you get a little bored, you want a new sound, pop out the old tubes, put in the new tubes, you get a new sound. So that's kind of cool. <clears throat> and because it's so easy to rebias with the Trion 25, there's no reason not to other than the cost of buying new tubes. Oh, well, there is one little catch, the price. The price is $3,995. A lot of money, but I think uh, in terms of build value, uh, in terms of build quality, uh, I think that's a reasonable price. Now, there is one option, and that is the Trio 25 can be had with a built-in USB digital converter. That's a nice feature if you just want a no fuss, no muss solution, I get it. But to tell you the truth, I would definitely, because that, that add-on tube converter, $695, I would rather take that, that kind of money and buy a separate DAC. You know, if you're going to own the Trio 25 for a long time, you, DACs are going to change over time. You know, five years from now, there'll be a whole new thing happening in DAC, so you don't want to be stuck with the DAC inside of this thing. So I say um, buy a Denifreps, uh, Aries 2 for $750, or a Shit Bifrost for $600. They're great DACs, um, and if the mood changes, if you want a new thing in, in converters, you'll just get another one down the road. Uh, so beyond the digital input thing, the USB input, it is an all-analog uh, integrated amplifier. There's no DSP or newfangled doodads going on inside this thing. It is a straightforward design. And for that, <laughs> I am thankful. I like things simple, you know. I don't want to get too complicated in life. Um, the tubes. So there is a, a pair of 12AX7s. That's the small signal tube. There's also a 12AU7, and each channel has two EL34 power tubes. I used three speakers over the course of this review. The Klipsch Cornwall 4, it's a very large horn speaker with a 15-inch with a woofer. The Tannoy Cheviot, which is a, has a 12-inch dual concentric driver. That's actually what I used for the bulk of my listening time. That was the best fit. And then later in the review, I used a set of Aperion Argon 3LS tower speakers. Now those speakers um, can be a little analytical, a little cool sounding, and I was hoping that the tubes would warm them up. You know, I really like the, I don't want to give you the wrong idea, I really like the Argon the 3LSs a lot. But in terms of matching up, it, it just wasn't happening. It was a little too lean with the Trio 25. So that was kind of in and out. It did the space, it did spatial stuff really well. It was very 3D, but I felt the balance was too cool in triode or uh, pentode. So that marriage wasn't a happy one. So that didn't last very long. So Van Morrison is one of my favorite artists and his album, Hymns to the Silence, that's one of those that I don't know. I don't have a, a CD of it. I, 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 I think I did at one point, but it somehow got lost, never replaced it. And I was streaming it on Tidal, and it's a great record because it has, it's, it was a two LP set when it came out, or two CD set when it came out. There's a lot, a lot of tracks, and a lot of them are sort of ambient, have Van doing spoken word pieces and just cool sounds behind it. Just spacey and ambient and Van Morrison. It's actually kind of, because he, he sets a mood. That's what makes it work. It's not an ambient like an Eno record or something. He's just sort of laying out these stories about listening to the radio and stuff. You listen to this one in the dark, it's really good stuff. And boy, the combination of the Cheviot and the Trio 25 with the lights out, yeah, I was, I was in the zone, and Van was right there, right between the Cheviot speakers. Magical, just stunning, gorgeous. So I was in this heavy Van Morrison mood, so I have this uh, multi-disc set of Van Morrison's Moondance album, his, probably his most iconic record, 
and it has lots and lots of outtakes. And I was listening to the outtakes, and you know, the thing that was working for me was, you, and you hear him talking to the musician in his weird Van Morrison way. He's very tentative the way he talks. His music speaks for itself, but just in terms of a communicator with his band, he just, he doesn't sound like he's sure, you know? He's like, well, let's try this out. But anyway, um, I, I like that sense of being there, of being in the studio as they're working out these songs from this incredible record. I mean, I've listened to that record forever, meaning uh, Moondance, and it, it, I never tire of it. It's just so, so perfect. But anyway, to hear these other versions, the outtakes of them, and hearing them, the songs taking form was fantastic. And then again, this is, this is a tube thing that you know, it's not about making it sound perfect or the ultimate in, in transparency or clarity. It's not that. It's not that. It's about making the music have, take form as it's coming out of the speakers. It just, it rounds it, it sweetens it, it adds a palpability to it that's just, just wonderful. So, um, yeah, I go back to my solid state past labs electronics. As much as I love them, they are cooler in balance, harder edge, not hard, but harder, uh, flatter, more 2D than what I was getting out of uh, the Cheviot with the Trio 25. So to pick things up a little bit, I listened to this live um, Kraftwerk album from this century. And, you know, the thing was, uh, I don't know anything about the recording of this album, but, you know, the dynamics are, are, are abrupt. <laughs> the dynamics are uh, jolting at times, and that's a good thing, right? It has that kind of ooh, power to pop, to shake you up, to make you sit up a little straighter when you hear it. That, to go from the Cheviot, relatively smallish floor standing speaker, though with a 12 inch uh, dual concentric driver to the Cornwall 4, which is much larger and is a 15 inch woofer in a much larger cabinet. The difference in scale and power and size was impossible to miss. It just has, it's just more life size, bigger, more room fulling, more oomph to the sound. The, the, going back to the Chevy, it got a lot smaller in all dimensions and stuff, so. But I think the amp was actually, not to be confusing, I would never want to confuse anybody. I'm just giving you as I heard. The Cheviot uh, is a smaller speaker and sounds like one, um, but the match, it seemed like the Triad was happier driving the Cheviot than it was driving the Cornwall 4. I think my work here is done. The Unison Research Trio 25, Integrated amplifier is, is is the one that if you've never if you're not experienced, this is the way to get experienced. And once you have a taste of a great tube amplifier, the only downside to it is that you might not ever want to <laughs> go back to a solid state amplifier. Now I happily go back and forth. But some people just stay in one camp or they stay in the other camp, that's cool too. But Tube amplifiers have a thing, and if you've never experienced what they do, it's about time. About time you started. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but Steve, it's four grand. I don't have four grand. I got you covered again. I'm gonna do a review really soon of, I think it's a five or $600 tube integrated amplifier. That's not gonna be what this one is. It's not gonna be as beautiful. It's not gonna be made in Italy. It's not gonna be any, it doesn't have all those switches. It's, no. But it's, a, it's going to be, I think, I hope, watch this space as they say, I think I have high hopes for this little amplifier. But it's not a powerhouse. It's a low, much lower powered amp. So it's not like, oh, Steve, I'll just get the $500 one. Well, no, <laughs> forget that. But it's a way in. It's a way into tubes that's coming up soon on the Audiophiliac Daily Show channel. So that's... That's where, I, that's where all this is leading. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Right now, it's coming to you five or six days a week. 
the days go up, the days go down. Sometimes it'll be a little more, sometimes it'll be less. We're going for the flexible scheduling right now. But while you're here, check out the playlist. I have playlists for more amplifier reviews, for speaker reviews, for headphone reviews, for music reviews, all kinds of stuff. Over 800 episodes live on this channel. More, it, more added every day, more or less, right? What else can I tell you? Well, if you like what I do, you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Steve.Guttenberg. Um, you can give these videos a thumb up if you like them, please do. Uh, share them with your friends on social media. That would be much appreciated. If you've gotten this far, check out my Patreon, which can be found at P A T R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.